That's your typical shift fork for third and fourth gear. The one on the right is steel, the one on the left is aluminum. And the slot cut in it is smaller on the aluminum than it is, it's bigger on the steel. And this shift work controls first and second gear. You can see this is the shift fork that's made out of steel. And this steel one is the finger is narrower than the aluminum one. Here you have an aluminum fifth gear shift fork, steel fifth gear shift fork, and you can see the fingers are thinner on the steel than they are on the aluminum. The aluminum ones are thicker. Those are your three main shift forks. Bought some of this brazing rod. It's LFB dash FC 330 seconds <clears throat> it's for brazing its brass welding rod with uh, flux already on it and then I used my this map gas I got it at Home Depot I have to buy a special <clears throat> tip for it <clears throat> anyway I brazed it under this shift fork, I heated up the metal till it was red hot, and then laid the the rod right down on the metal, and it as it heated up, it just kind of laid down on there, softened up and laid down, and it began to melt in place. Uh, initially, I had the heat coming up from below until it got red hot, and then. When I was laying the rod on, I pointed it right at the rod while the metal was red hot. And it just melted right on there. You see on this side, um, I started way up there. I'll have to cut that excess off. But it seems to work alright. I just got to file it down to the shape or uh, probably use my little Dremel tool. This one was a little tougher to do because it's inside. I mean, I did basically the same thing. <clears throat> I picked out a shift fork that wasn't too bad on on the left side. It hardly anywhere. It just mostly was all on the right side. I set it in a vise like this, and I did the same thing to lay in the the brass, and then very carefully used my little Dremel tool grinding wheel and ground it, and check, kept checking it with my calipers. So I had it pretty close to the same gap, top and bottom. Then I took this ring, which slides into it, and kind of moved it back and forth to kind of look at the gap, and I got it so I was about equal top and bottom. I think it'll be alright. I'm sure that it'll probably kind of wear in place at first. But I got as close as I could with my primitive tools. We're going to try it on this transmission and see what happens. Shift forks. There are two styles that wear out. The one on the right controls first and second, or a third and fourth gear. <clears throat> okay, I just brazed just the one side of this and then I uh, filed it very carefully and uh, checked it quite often with the calipers and them set to the thickness they're supposed to be. I got it so it's almost dead on when you slide the calipers. And then I stuck it in the, uh, the slider and it fits in there and moves about the same top and bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. Okay, I need to make a gasket for the main case. So basically, I marked the outline of it. I didn't mark the inside, just the outline. And then I smeared some adhesive 
gasket adhesive on it and glued it <clears throat> and it's still got the center in it so when it's dry in a couple of hours I'll flip it over and take a ball peen hammer and like with the gaskets over a hole you just tap it with a ball peen hammer and it clears out the hole it's pretty easy going this is a uh, 164 thick gasket material put a lot of weights on it so it can dry for a while here you can see I glued a 164 inch thick gasket with some uh, adhesive super high tack gasket sealant so let's sit for three or four hours and then in order to clear these holes you just tap with a with the ball peen hammer just tap around them where the holes are and you see I've uh, got all the holes and I'll just take a one of these and I'll go around the inside all the way around cut out the inside before I cut you take your finger and just rub it along the edge it'll mark where the uh, I need to cut with the razor blade It'll be a little easier to see where I have to, to go along here if you have a dirty finger it's even better because it makes a dirty edge there I took the screw down hit a rubber and rubbed it along the edge and see it left a dark mark all the way around for me to follow there's the finished product okay that's the restrict pin I guess it keeps you from putting it in reverse accidentally and it's spring loaded looks like that and that plunger right there with a hole in it that's supposed to go in and out but you see that one's stuck When they're good, you see it sticks out there a good three eighths of an inch or so. Well, I took and I ground off the top edge of that until I got the top off of that. Here's the top. And inside was the plunger piston with this big spring. So I think I'll be able to fix it, uh, clean this plunger up, put it in there, put the spring back in and vice grip it and then I'll tack weld the cap back on. This is one where the piston is stuck all the way in. Kind of hard to, I've tried soaking them, heating them, all kinds of stuff. I can't get them to break free. So I took this one here and I drilled a 3 16th hole in it. And I stuck it in here. And I took a nail that's about 3 16 diameter and I ground the end flat and I stuck it in there and hammered it down until the piston popped out. And then I used the channel locks to squeeze the piston back in. I just kept going back and forth until it finally was free because it would get stuck when I'd pop it all the way in. You can see I made this bracket here. This is the, uh, what, the rear transmission mount hole. There's a bolt inside here that hooks up to the jack. Anyway, that's what I use to attach that to the jack and then I push the jack underneath the car with the transmission on it and then I can jack the transmission up. My jack only goes up about nine inches so down here I have these so I can bolt some legs to them temporarily and that way it, it'll, the transmission is supported and then I can let the jack free and bring the jack up and slip some boards underneath it to raise it up about four or five inches and then I can jack it up the rest of the way in. And 
the way I made that screw under there is uh, when it bolts to the jack, it's loose, and so it can pivot on the jack. I can, I can rock the transmission from side to side and up and down about an inch to inch and a half so I can work it in, slide it into place. <clears throat> when I do that, I do it with the input shaft removed and uh, put the input shaft in after I've got the transmission installed. Makes life a hell of a lot easier, although it is kind of hard to, you know, to reach these because you got the floor well here. But, you know, it's not too bad. You can reach your hand up in there and get the shaft in. And then when you're putting these bolts in, you get an extension that runs all the way out to here. I use a 3 8 It's a couple of feet long at least. Put all those bolts in. Makes life a lot easier with that long extension. Front down there. One pin. The reason I cut this notch, I'm kind of notching it back here. That way it clears the hanger for the exhaust pipe. You're trying to get it up in there. It only needs one support on the back, which is right here. It looks like that's what it looks like with the transmission off. It's uh, 17 and a quarter by nine and three quarter, and this pin is about five and five eighths from the far side, and about six and a half from the front. It's a pretty good balancing point for this thing. That bolt, that's for the rear transmission mount hole, and that's my mount for the <coughs> jack. And what I do, I took this washer and I ground it down, and that sits on the jack, and that way it can rock with that bevel on it like that. That's about it.